Welcome back to Halloween on Christmas 2. I'm Adam J. I'm really anxious to just finish up these lists so I can get back to the other movies, guys. So, let's not waste any time. These are my top 13 favorite horror film remakes. Yes, I actually found 13 that I liked. Try not to faint. Yeah, I'm definitely scraping the bottom of the barrel with this one because, well, when all is said and done, this really wasn't a good remake. It pretty much portrays everything the original Halloween stood for in favor of just over-explaining everything. So, why is it on the list? Well, as a remake, it's pretty terrible, but viewed as a standalone film not taking the original into account, it's really not that bad. As a standalone film, it's actually a very well done character study of a psychopath. And that's all Rob Zombie wanted to do, and that's pretty much all he delivered. And the fact that it's nowhere near as atrocious as its protege helps too. Some of the actors did a good job as well. Malcolm McDowell was a good choice for Loomis. Scout Taylor Compton does a good job as Laurie Strode. Dake Farsh is a creepy little bastard portraying a young Michael Myers. And Tyler Maine is fucking intense playing The Shape. Also, a nice cameo by the talented and beautiful Danielle Harris, who portrayed Jamie Lloyd in the original Halloween series, gives the film a boost, at least for me. You heard it here, folks. Danielle Harris makes everything better. Okay, almost everything. So, yeah, not a very good remake. Like, at all. But as a standalone film, it's fine, serviceable, and hey, at least I don't hate this one. And for the sake of padding this list out to a top 13... I'm more than willing to give this somewhat enjoyable effort a pass. Before Heath Ledger was casted to play the Joker in The Dark Knight, Crispin Glover was on the shortlist, and I can definitely see why after watching this film. The film revolves around a creepy guy named Willard whose mother passes away, leaving him lonely. He finds comfort in the rats that he has trained, no, I'm serious. He trains a rat army in this film, and we see every step of him doing this. There's nothing supernatural about it. It's just a creepy guy doing really creepy shit. Well, one day after being tormented for too long, Willard decides, fuck this, and uses the rats to rain down hell upon those who have wronged him. Crispin Glover is fucking scary in this film, and is able to carry the rather ridiculous premise. I've never seen the original Willard, so I can't compare them or anything, but I sure as hell enjoyed this one. If I could choose one word to describe this remake, it would be fun. Fright Night is just a fun remake. That comes largely from its appreciation for its original source material and the actors chosen to play the roles. Anton Yelchin stars as a young boy living with his single mom, when one day a new neighbor comes to town played by Colin Farrell. In the vein of Rear Window, he becomes suspicious of his new neighbor, and rightfully so as it turns out Colin Farrell is a vampire, and is turning more and more locals into vampires to raise an army. Now, to save his town, his mother, and his new girlfriend, he has to team up with a TV celebrity. Played by God on High, leader of the world, best Doctor Who ever, David Tennant. Colin Farrell revels in this role as the neighboring vampire. He is having so much fun and taking full advantage of everything he has. Anton Yelchin is great as always, and David Tennant, oh my god, hilarious. Almost everything out of this guy's mouth is awesome. The original Fright Night was good for its time, and this remake is certainly good for now. If anyone can make a weird horror movie even weirder, it's David Cronenberg. And The Fly was no exception. I mean, the original was considered controversial back in its day. This remake makes the original look like fucking Barney and Friends. The Fly is about a self-obsessed scientist, played by Jeff Goldblum, who invents a device meant to transport matter from one place to another. However, when he tests it on himself, he ends up inadvertently sharing the pod with a common housefly, causing him to slowly transmutate into a full-grown fly himself. To all you 80s cartoon fanboys out there, this might sound a little familiar. And it should, because it was the inspiration for Baxter Stockman in the Ninja Turtles cartoon. Container 
can hold me. Yes, this gore fest of a movie inspired a children's cartoon character. That's fucking awesome. Cronenberg fuses his talent for horror and gore with beautifully developed characters, and it makes for a shocking yet surprisingly touching and tragic story. I'm sure that not everyone will agree with all the choices I have in this list, but the horror community can't deny that this was one damn good remake that improved on the original. Leave it to Martin Scorsese to deliver a truly intense horror film. The remake of the 1960s film of the same name involves a convict played by Robert De Niro, who is released from prison and slowly starts driving the lawyer who sent him there insane, constantly bumping into him, harassing his family, and even beating one of his co-workers nearly to death just to get to him. The twist is, the lawyer played by Nick Nolte was his lawyer, and withheld information that could have kept him out of prison. Wow, a lawyer with a conscience? I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like I should call bullshit. Nolte and De Niro play so well off each other, it's just a treat seeing them play these roles. The remake was written by Wesley Strick, who later went on to do an uncredited rewrite of one of my favorite films, Batman Returns. Oh my god, that's awesome! What has he done recently? Just, just forget I fucking asked. Oh god. I know I'm in a serious minority on this one, but I never found the original Blob to be a scary film. I mean, okay, I respect it in the sense that it was one of the first horror movies to feature teenagers as the heroes, setting up the usual shtick we see today. That's impressive. But the rest of the movie, I just found to be a bore. I never got into it. This remake, on the other hand, was rather impressive. The Blob looks more realized, the acting is better, and even the death scenes are fucking insane at times. I'll never forget that scene of the Blob eating that kid in the water. I did not see that coming. Shawnee Smith, who would later go on to be a major player in the Saw films, and Kevin Dillon both do a good job together as the main heroes. I will admit it's far from perfect, but I did get more entertainment out of it than the original. If that isn't a sign of a good remake, I don't know what is. If there is any director who has the ability to become the next Wes Craven, Alexander Aja is that director. And the remake of The Hills Have Eyes is proof of that, because while many may disagree with me, this was one remake that I honestly felt topped the original. It keeps pretty much the same story, but goes all out with it, making it much more intense. The acting was a lot less hammy and more realistic this time around, and I felt myself more scared, more uneasy, and just all around more uncomfortable watching this than I did the original but uncomfortable in a good way. Unlike bullshit like Wolf Creek and I Spit on Your Grave, the film makes you feel uncomfortable for the sake of the horror experience, not just for shock value. Remember when I talked about I Spit on Your Grave and said I didn't need to constantly watch the rape happen on screen to know it happened? In this film, there is a rape scene, but it's mostly implied. It shows it start to happen and then immediately cuts to an outside distraction. Thank you, thank you so much fucking much for not making me sit through that. The acting in the film is great. Emil Duravin, Ted Levin, and even Aaron Stanford, who you might remember as Pyro from the X-Men films, gives the best performance I've seen from him, especially in the climax, which is nothing short of intense. Not many remakes have the ability to top the original. This one did in almost every department. This was the film that introduced me to director Zack Snyder, who is now one of my favorite directors working today. Yes, I know Sucker Punch was terrible, but it looked so pretty. Either way, joking aside, when Snyder adapts something, when he adapts something, I know I'm in for a good time. And Dawn of the Dead, like Man of Steel, Watchmen, and 300, is no exception. This isn't just four people in a mall anymore like the original. This is a whole group of people who have to learn to trust one another to survive, and who all get a damn good amount of screen time. I mean, I liked these characters. When each one of them went, I actually felt something, so that's a plus. 
Now, I'm not a big fan of running zombies, but this film is a serious exception to that. As them running helps make some of the scenes, more in particular the scene in the parking garage, much more intense. The action is great, the actors are great, the situations at times are really intense, and even some of the writing gets a few laughs here and there. If you haven't seen this remake, I recommend it highly. Yes, again, another one that I know I'm in a minority on, but I loved the remake of Carrie that came out last year. And really, there's two major things that do it for me. I love the book by Stephen King. And in my opinion, this film was a much better adaptation, as it stuck closer to the social commentary and characters that King was trying to get across. Brian De Palma put much more emphasis on the horror aspects of the novel in the original, which wasn't a bad thing, but the horror really overshadowed the meaning in the original because of that. Here, there are a few scary moments, but again, the bullying aspect takes over most of the film, and I was perfectly okay with that. In this day and age where bullying in schools has only gotten worse and worse, this story seems to be needed now more than ever. The second thing is who they got to play Carrie. I love Chloe Moretz. She is such a great young actress, and I will watch her in any movie she's in. Yes, any movie. No. No matter how crappy, I don't care. Personally, I thought she was great as Carrie White. Many have complained saying that she's too pretty to play Carrie, and I understand to a point. I mean, in the book, Carrie is described as being fat and unsightly, but are you people just going to pretend that Sissy Spacek was ugly? She looks pretty damn fine for where I'm sitting. So yeah, I know I'm in a huge minority on this one again, but I certainly think the remake of Carrie deserves more love than it gets. Yep, yet another horror remake starring Chloe Moretz. And no, you will not see that one on here anytime soon. Out of all the remakes of foreign horror films that Americans have made, Let Me In is the only one that does its original counterpart justice. The ideas of friendship and loneliness involving a bullied boy and a young girl vampire is brilliantly handled and recaptured. Chloe Moretz and Cody Smith McPhee are two wonderful actors, and they make a very compelling pair. When they act together, never once does it feel like an act. You believe that they are really friends and that they are both stuck in two terrible situations. And to top it all off, we have Casey Jones himself, alias Katias, playing the sheriff investigating the town's mysterious murders. What's not to love about that? Matt Reeves directs this remake with such precision, giving each scene a nice atmospheric touch. Is the original better? Yeah, probably. But this is one remake that should not be ignored because of that. I actually have a hard time calling this one a remake, as it takes a lot less from the original film and chooses to instead do a more accurate adaptation of who goes there. Close call, but it does resemble the original in a lot of ways, more particularly in the setting, so I guess it works to call it a remake. I mean, pretty much everyone else has. The thing revolves around the team from Antarctica who find an alien spacecraft in the ice and unleash a horrifying alien that has the ability to replicate itself as any single one of them. The horror of this remake comes solely from the paranoia of the crew. You never know who the thing is as it is very good at hiding itself. It can become anyone, so we are able to see each member of this expedition slowly lose their minds as they grow more and more paranoid of one another. It's actually a very clever movie because of that. The acting in the film is fine. Nothing special, but damn impressive. Kurt Russell and Keith David, who you may remember as the voice of Goliath from Gargoyles, give the best performances in the movie, and their chemistry only gets better as the two of them continue to grow more suspicious of each other. When the film first came out, it bombed, and bombed badly. But because of its atmosphere, smart storytelling, and ingenious creature effects that still hold up after 32 years, the thing has become a cult classic in the horror industry, and rightfully so. While it was just released last year, Evil Dead is a prime example of a perfect remake. It keeps the same story, puts its own spin on it, and revels in the cheesiness and vicious nature that made the original Evil Dead a classic. Hell, 
Even the people behind the original produced this remake, with Sam Raimi making the statement that this was closer to what he originally wanted to do, and wasn't able to do due to budget restraints. I often say that a movie doesn't need endless amounts of gore to be scary, and I stand by that. But with Evil Dead, the gore was off the charts, and it was still scary. I saw it with Spidey in the theaters, and both of us jumped on several occasions, and not because of crappy jump scares, but because the shit we were seeing was genuinely frightening. All the actors involved do a wonderful job. Jane Levy especially, as the new Ash character, was fantastic. Those scenes of her being possessed by a deadite made for some intense moments of her going batshit insane. She was clearly having fun with it. Evil Dead is not just one of the best remakes, it's also one of the most scary and fun horror films released in a while. Being that it is indeed one of my favorite movies, this should come as no surprise to anyone that it made number one. You could argue that this isn't technically a remake, as Dracula has been done to death over the years. But being that there are a lot of scenes that mimic scenes from the Universal Classic, it's really hard not to consider it a remake. This film is wonderfully written and directed by Francis Ford Coppola, who directs a superb cast, featuring Anthony Hopkins as Van Helsing, Winona Ryder as Mina Harker, and Gary Oldman as the man himself, Count Dracula. Every time I see this movie, it never fails to impress me and only gets better with each passing view. The atmosphere, the set designs, the wardrobe, the intense sense of dread, this film has it all. It's weird because not a lot of people I've talked to really like it all that much, and I never understood why. I loved the romantic angle they took with Dracula and Mina, I thought the moments that were meant to scare were absolutely frightening, and the creature effects, my god, that giant man bat still scares the crap out of me. It's a horrifying film that I not only love, but greatly appreciate from a storytelling and effects standpoint. Bram Stoker's Dracula is my absolute favorite horror remake. <laughs> Make no mistake, he must be stopped. <laughs> 